Former UFC champion Cain Velasquez was granted bail after spending eight months in jail. As reported by ESPN, Velasquez was granted a $1 million bail on Tuesday after eight months in custody. The report emphasized that Judge Bocanegra cited Velasquez's reputation as a family man. The tremendous support Velasquez has received from the mixed martial arts community led the judge to believe that he won't be a repeat offender. The mixed martial arts legend was charged with attempted murder, shooting at a motor vehicle or aircraft, carrying a loaded firearm with intent to commit a felony, willfully discharging a firearm from a vehicle, assault with a firearm, and assault with a deadly weapon. Velasquez pleaded not guilty to all charges in August. Moving forward to the here and now, the mixed martial arts fighter turned professional wrestler is out of jail after being granted a $1 million bail. Dominic Reyes thinks John Jones has prolonged his return too much. Jones hasn't competed since he edged Reyes out to retain the light heavyweight title on February 2020. He relinquished the belt six months later and has been working toward a heavyweight debut, which has yet to materialize. Reyes has wanted to run things back after his controversial loss to Jones at UFC 247 and is surprised to see that Jones still hasn't fought. It's been so long since he fought, um, since we fought. That whole literally running from me, saying he doesn't get paid enough to fight me again, the whole deal was a complete joke. You know what I mean? And, and it, it's like, and then getting arrested again multiple times. And, dude make up your mind you know I, I don't i don't it's hard to say because it's like i don't know i don't know who he's training with i don't know what's going on i don't know what they're you know what's going on i don't really care to be honest it's just like either just get on the sidelines permanently or get in the game what are you going to do after he lost to jones reyes fought jan blahovish for the vacant 205 pound title at ufc 253. He was knocked out in round two. He then drew current light heavyweight champ, Jury Prohaska, on May 2021, but was on the receiving end of another knockout loss. Now Reyes will look to snap a three-fight skid when he meets Ryan Spann on Saturday at UFC 281. Israel Adesanya claims he knows something Pereira doesn't. Israel Adesanya has a trick up his sleeve for his third fight with Alex Pereira. The challenger currently holds a 2-0 series advantage over Adesanya, having beaten the UFC middleweight champion twice in kickboxing. Their first bout was a closely contested affair that Pereira won by split decision, and their second bout ended with an incredible knockout win for Pereira that has been replayed countless times ahead of their UFC 281 main event clash in New York. While Adesanya is strictly business heading into his next title defense, He's aware that there are narrative stakes on line this Saturday. Because this is about me and my legacy. This is about, I guess, rewriting history, even though it is history and I never chased this. This is about me rewriting a new path of history and just showing people what I can really do. Because, again, you almost forgot. They Shout forget, to Ariel. Yes. They always forget. And it's because of this TikTok era. The attention span is so quick. They move on so fast. So. Yeah, this is personal. Like, for me, I'm just gonna, I've said less, you know? He can do all the tennis ball videos and fucking hoverboard things he wants, but for me, I'm just like, cool, you do you. He has bragging rights, so let him do that. But yeah, when it's time, I know something he doesn't. Which is what? I can't tell you. Okay. Yeah. Whatever secret strategy, the last stylebender is planning to make sure that his third fight with Pereira ends differently, he won't reveal it. Pereira earns his USC title shot in just his eighth professional mixed martial arts bout and his fourth for the promotion, but has a wealth of kickboxing experience, including championship wins in two divisions for glory kickboxing. He is 3-0 in the USC and was chosen to be Adesanya's next challenger after first round knockout of Sean Strickland this past July. We're getting closer and closer to USC 281. Let us know who you got for Pereira versus Adesanya in the comments. Dan Hardy backs Israel Adesanya to beat Alex Pereira. UFC veteran Dan Hardy has made his prediction for the upcoming middleweight title clash between Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira. Hardy believes Adesanya will get the better of Pereira in mixed martial arts, which has smaller gloves and allows a wider range of movement compared to kickboxing. Hardy also believes that Pereira hasn't yet adapted to fighting elite middleweights, 
although he might have the potential to do so. While the outlaw isn't dismissing the possibility of Adesanya getting rocked, he doesn't believe the UFC middleweight champion will get finished. I'm leaning towards Adesanya. I feel like the small gloves, the bigger space, the you know the the the, the wider corners, 135 degrees instead of 90, gives him more more get outs if he's moving laterally up against the fence. And I still feel like you know in seven fights, Pereira is probably not fully adapted to the top flight mixed martial arts um, level just yet. Mm -hmm. Do doesn't mean that he can't, but I feel like Adesanya with the the experience that he's got, the advantage uh, is going to be too great for him at that range and, and I feel like he's going to outpoint him to a to a decision. Might have a couple of eerie moments where he gets dropped and hurt but I, I don't think he's going to get put away. I think he's uh, I think he's a bit too slick in those small gloves. Are you with Dan Hardy? Let us know in the comments. Michael Chandler explains why he deserves to fight for the USC lightweight title after Dustin Poirier's bout. Michael Chandler believes his years of experience in mixed martial arts and wrestling credentials are enough to beat the current lightweight champion, Islam Makachev. Chandler is set to face Dustin Poirier at UFC 281 in a highly anticipated lightweight clash. In a recent interview with Daniel Cormier and Ryan Clark on ESPN MMA, Chandler previewed his upcoming bout. He also spoke about his vision and desire to face Makachev for the title and how he sees the fight playing out. I think that's one of the beautiful things about coming to the UFC as a 34-year-old seasoned veteran. A lot of these guys coming to the UFC at 22 years old, 23 years old, 20 years old, they're, they're trying to grow up inside of the UFC. Bellator was definitely not the UFC. The stage is a thousand times bigger, but what I have accrued in experience and maturity over the last, you know, 14 years of fighting is, uh, is just uh, invaluable. So honestly, I love it. I want Islam to talk about me. I want to talk about Islam. I do think I have the best wrestling on this list that you're looking at right now. I have the best wrestling, good old fashioned, passionate American D1, all American wrestling. And I do believe that I can I can shut down Islam and I can beat him. Do I deserve the title shot with a win over Poirier? It remains to be seen. Depends on my performance and it also depends on what the UFC brass wants to do. After UFC 280, Islam Mekachev called out featherweight champion Alexander Volkanovsky after beating Charles Oliveira for the lightweight title. With both champions eager to face each other in a super fight, the matchup looks likely for UFC 284 in Australia next year. Coming off a win over Tony Ferguson via second round knockout, Michael Chandler will look to beat Dustin Poirier this weekend and extend his win streak. While it remains to be seen if the winner of Poirier vs Chandler gets a title shot, it certainly promises to be an entertaining matchup. Chel Sonnen predicts the outcome of Dustin Poirier vs Michael Chandler. Chel Sonnen recently weighed in on the upcoming lightweight clash between Dustin Poirier and Michael Chandler. While Sonnen has little doubt about Poirier beating Chandler in a five-round affair, the UFC veteran admits that things are different in a three-round clash. According to Sonnen, Chandler has tremendous wrestling skills, which can be utilized to secure an early takedown and control the round. The 45-year-old had this to say on his YouTube channel. Michael Chandler versus Dustin Poirier for 25 minutes. I feel fairly comfortable in my prediction that Dustin Poirier wins that match. When you shorten it to three rounds, things just change. That takedown ability of Chandler is real. It exists. And should Chandler execute that takedown ability, say in the first round, and he gets that position, I think that he can ride out an entire round. Now you've got two rounds left and Chandler's only got to grab one of them. Do you agree with Sonnen? Who do you think will win, Poirier or Chandler? Let us know in the comments. Sean O'Malley says ex-USC champ Henry Cejudo kind of shot himself in the foot by retiring. Henry hung up his gloves on May 2020 after he retained his UFC bantamweight title against Dominic Cruz. However, he decided to come out of retirement two years later, and O'Malley sees it as a negotiation ploy that failed. Now former dual champion Triple C is looking to reclaim the 135-pound title he never lost. He suggested an interim title fight with O'Malley, but O'Malley thinks fighting Marlon Vera would be a more lucrative option. Than me versus Henry. Henry has, it just, it's weird being all the accolades he has, he just... He's not a draw, and that's the reason he left. He wasn't getting paid what he deserved, so he thought maybe he would leave and the UFC would want him back, and they didn't. So now he kind of shot himself in the foot. But, 
Yeah, me versus Cheeto's a bigger fight. Sanhagen, even. Me versus Corey Sanhagen's a bigger fight. Me versus this coffee cup would probably be a little bit bigger fight. But yeah, I'm super curious where this division's gonna go. O'Malley jumped to the number one spot in the UFC's bantamweight rankings after he edged out former champion Pierre Yan at UFC 280 in Abu Dhabi. The idea of an interim title surfaced after reigning bantamweight champ Aljamain Sterling told MMA Junkie that he's targeting a return on June 2023. Which fight would excite you more, Suga versus Cheeto Vera or Henry Cejudo? Let us know in the comments. Teddy Atlas is set to be part of the commentary team at UFC 281. According to MMA Junkie, Teddy Atlas is scheduled to be part of the UFC 281 media team. Joining the post-fight show after the New York pay-per-view event, Atlas is widely known for his boxing knowledge, but regularly discusses mixed martial arts and UFC on his podcast. Joe Rogan will also be returning to the media team, with the color commentator being joined by John Anik and Daniel Cormier. Bruce Buffer will of course be the announcer, with Megan Olivi leading the backstage interviews with the fighters. Rogan hasn't been seen on the UFC's commentary desk. Since UFC 279 in September, the podcaster has made it clear that he is not willing to travel around the world for the UFC commentary team, hence his absence from UFC 280. Teddy Atlas always brings a wealth of knowledge with him when engaging in media activities. The 66-year-old is also no stranger to working behind a desk, with Atlas covering numerous events for ESPN in the boxing world. The boxing expert also has his own YouTube channel and podcast, which regularly covers both boxing and mixed martial arts. That's all for today's video. If you want to know the latest UFC news, subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications bell, and click the like button so you don't miss any details about the upcoming fights. Thanks for watching. See you soon.